All right, everybody, welcome to the Bear Fruit Show, uh, where we are learning from other people. I had a mentor once tell me, go find somebody with fruit on the tree and learn from them and let their seating be your floor. And I believe wisdom is more precious than jewels. And we have a special guest with us today, uh, Seth Barnes. So excited to have you here. Thank you, Seth. It's great to be here, Kyle. Awesome. So Seth is a serial entrepreneur focused on faith-based solutions to the world's problems. He is the founder of Adventures and Missions, a ministry that has placed over 150,000 volunteers on the mission project since 1989. Adventures has helped start ministries, training centers around the world, and focused on making the goal a reality. Seth has founded the World Race in 2005 and is currently involved in two women's empowerment movements. He is currently working on the World Race 3.0 for Gen Z, a program called Launch You. He is an author and speaker, a husband to Karen and father to five uh, children and seven grandchildren. Seth, uh, you, have, uh, you have done quite a bit, my friend. Yeah, since I wrote that, it's actually um, one and a half more grandchildren. So uh, <laughs> another week That's or two, awesome. actually another week or two, and we'll have nine grandchildren. Wow, wow. Yeah, I, we were joking on the phone earlier saying, uh, you know, I need to go to you for some advice. I'm about to have my third girl. And uh, you're four girls and, and a boy, right? Yes. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Well, Seth, uh, you know, I know Seth from the World Race. So I was actually, you know, um, one of the missionaries that got to go on that amazing experience that truly changed my life. And um, it was something that I'll never forget and has empowered me to to continue to be a world changer and have a heart for missions. And it's how me and my wife even met. So there's just so many connections to the World Race. And um, I'm blessed just to, just to know you and, and, and being a part of that. So thank you. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure, Kyle. You're, you're doing it. It's fun to see people kind of graduate out of our sphere and, and go on. And I like your motto of making somebody else's ceiling your floor. That's a, that's yeah. a good way to look yeah. at it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Seth, let's kind of start there. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know, some people in your life. Uh, I know you had mentioned Andrew Shearman um, and Seth Godin as people who have were that for you. You know, their their ceiling yeah. was your floor. Um, so, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about what that relationship looked like and and yeah. everything from it. Well, I've always been um, a hungry guy. I've, I've wanted to grow in all of my dimensions, uh, uh, body, soul, and spirit. And I, uh, for a long time, struggled because. In terms of my soul, in terms of my you know, intellect, and and in terms of my capacity, uh, you know, I I was doing well, body healthy, you know. But in terms of my spirit, I needed help. I needed mm. to better understand uh, what is this kingdom of God and where do I fit in it. And um, I was, you know, I I love the authenticity of young people, and I've always been a person committed to authenticity and vulnerability. And I would look at leaders and I would just see a lack of authenticity. I'd see the ways in which they were always compromising seemed hypocritical mm. to me. And yeah. it was 1991 and I was in a Presbyterian church in West Palm Beach and Andrew Shearman came and spoke. And his message was about the kingdom of God. And I'll never forget one of the, the first messages that it, he, he, he was there for maybe three or four days and, and shared multiple messages. But one of the first ones was that we need to have a spirit of violence, which mm. is not how we typically picture Jesus. We yeah. don't associate him with violence, but Jesus did come to tear down one kingdom and to build up another kingdom. And there's the kingdom right. of darkness that has so many people enslaved. And I resonated with that. I said, that's right. That, that <laughs> This man is actually sharing truth that I've never heard expressed this way. And I thought, man, I, I need to, he's also such a passionate guy and such a, has such a winsome way to communicate that I thought I need to somehow track him down and uh, befriend him if possible, if he would even be a <laughs> friend to me and learn from him. And it took me about six or years or so. I remember wow. uh, meeting him down in, in Brownsville, Texas and uh like the next year and we we're at a denny's and we we're with a, a mutual friend and he said you know seth is real interested in learning from you 
And Andrew Shearman said, well, I have one question for you, Seth. And I said, what is it? And he says, are you apostolic? And I said, I have no clue no if I'm <laughs> apostolic. What does that even mean? <laughs> Good grief. It, it was a challenge, you know, and, and Al, Andrew is not afraid to challenge people. And I like that. You know, I, I think that most of us don't recognize the greatness that is, poten mm. you know, potentially there if we'll just die and allow Jesus to live through us. And that sounds maybe hackneyed to some, but it's something that we need to struggle with here in America where everything is so abundant. We have so much in the way of comfort, yeah. so many things that dumb down our spirit. So for me, um, I had to chase after him. And, and finally, you know, we, be, we did become friends. And uh, just before I got on this, um, on this podcast, I was texting him about meeting up in Morocco this year. Nice. He's, set, he's 78 years old, I think. And uh, and still going strong. So yeah, uh, a guy yeah, that I've yeah. learned from, and and it's been fun to to not just be mentored by him, but also to be his friend. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I was looking at some of the YouTube videos of him, and uh, he's just got an amazing uh, yeah. stories and just personality, and uh, just obviously heart for the kingdom. And so, what was the one thing that you feel like you really took away? From that relationship um i mean it sounded like you had to actually pursue him it wasn't and just like jesus mm -hmm. in a lot of ways you know he's constantly pursuing us right. but you know there's a pursuit on our end as well you yeah. know what was the you know thing that you really took away from that relationship if there uh, so many things. i'm sure there was a lot but yeah there's, the there's one, so maybe there's, there's so many things you know we talk <laughs> about covenant and community and authenticity and intimacy and all these things are important but his I think if he were to say, you know, the, the one thing that he would communicate to people um, that they don't necessarily believe about themselves is that we were born to be loved. Mm. In other words, um, this idea that we have to go and the chief end of man is to glorify God. No, uh, maybe the chief end of man is to recognize that how much he loves us and to embrace that love. And, yeah, and no, so that's he's, so good. He, yeah, because I, I, we, we do struggle with identity issues and it's at its by at its core it's because yeah uh, we don't really believe that we believe we got to perform for him mm, mm. yeah that's so good i mean it's just just receiving his love and and he loves us no matter what and there's nothing we can do to make him love us anymore he just loves yeah. us and that's a beautiful thing when you can actually receive that and and live that and walk in that you know because it is becomes part of your identity because there's so many insecurities that come up and you see it not just in, in young, you know, young college kids and, and youth, but you see it in adults. You see it in, yeah. you know, people who are 50, 60 years old. And it's just, there really is an identity um, crisis in the world in a way. So, yeah, yeah, no, that's really good. Um, so tell me about maybe, uh, I know you're adventurous. Tell me about maybe an adventure um, with you and Andrew that, uh, Maybe you were like, wow, this is, this was fun, or maybe this was game changing or life changing. I'll tell you way. about this. I'll tell you about the start of the world race. So yeah. I came, I came Perfect. back from, I was in um, South Africa mm. and that's where I really kind of, it, I came to Jesus on, this is an amazing idea before I had thought, you know, it's going to get criticized for being too much of a touristy kind of thing that, uh, you know, young people are going to get mixed motives and it's true and we do face that criticism but yeah. um I, I felt like god speaking to me and and i was in cape town and i came back and i i just felt like i had the word of the lord and mm. i i shared that with andrew and a, a couple of other guys uh tom davis and gary black and and they encouraged me and i said go for it and so i began to to do this thing and within you know that was march of 2005 and we launched in January of 2006 with 24 wow. people. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, you're a man of action. It yeah. wasn't like, hey, let me think about this. You're like, no, God said it. I'm going to do it. It's it, Your greatest strength is often your greatest weakness. And that could be a, <laughs> a weakness for me. Just ask my wife. But I, uh, I said to these guys, you guys got to join me down in Mexico. We'll launch out of there. And my idea was really... Um, to, to also make it a little fun and to empower uh, the teams that we had. We had three teams of about seven or eight. And, uh, and so uh, basically to get around the world on, on their own initiative, we would tell them where and we would give them the money 
but they would have to figure it out. And so we wow. gave three thousand dollars to each of the different groups, and we said, "We'll meet you at the bottom of Mexico." And they went and they <laughs> they got these old rickety vans that you know were blowing black smoke. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and, and it was fun because um, we all, we started in Matamoros, which is a place you can't really even get to without uh, the drug lords, um, you know, or, or regularly. There was just in the news this past week where you had uh, two people from America that were kidnapping and killed. Mm. And uh, anyway, we were down there and we were near a, a big old garbage dump and we were training these young people. Then we handed them $3,000 and off they went down the road with these three vehicles. And sure enough, a month later, after they'd hiked up to the top of a, a Mayan ruin, we met them there and we trained them wow. some more. And, and so for that year, we would go and, and just encourage them. And, and it, it launched this adventure, this incredible experience that you, you had of, of yeah. giving young people the opportunity to see not just the world, but them in it and to see poverty and to see injustice and to be able mm -hmm. to do something about it, or at least to wrestle with it, wrestle with their own sense of adequacy or inadequacy as they attempted to bring hope to those that didn't have it. So um, that was a great adventure for us. And, and we went on and learned about coaching and about what yeah. it takes to help young people to embrace their identity in Christ and to begin to walk in a sense of, uh, I am enough and mm. not out of a deficit. Yeah, no, that's so good. And and that was one of the things, you know, our world race looked a little different. Um, I would have loved that experience as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think, you know, it obviously evolved into something pretty amazing. I mean, when I went, there was, you were launching five squads of 50 plus people and you were doing yeah. that five times a year. And, and that was just, and amazing to be able to move that many people. It, it grew uh, from commitment. there. We had, I think, yeah. 800 people at the end. And when COVID hit, we had to bring 600 home from the field that mm. in one, within one week. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, and so it's um, and now you've got Gen Z and Gen Z needs something different. They've got that same sense of wanting to um, battle injustice and to, to find out who Jesus really is. And there's all these questions, but that. We need something that's different for them than millennials. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And that's part of what you're you're launching right now. So um, tell me a little bit about what that looks like for Gen Z and and uh, and all that. So it, yeah. I believe it's you said it's launch you. Yeah, well, I've been working on this thing for about six years, and I, I've known that that. You, where are you in Durango? Did you say I can hear that? I train can you hear the, the train. I can the hear the train in the by. background. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's it's, it's me, talking to us. I'll give a little. See if people can see it. There it is. Yeah, yeah. That's Choo -choo great. Choo train. Chug so, along. you know, um, my brother who is uh, a, maybe a Gen Xer just arrived in my house last night. He has driven all the way from Alaska down to Georgia. Wow. And his car broke down and it was 33 degrees below zero. And he would have died had they not been able to connect with um, someone to come and get them. Oh and, my gosh. You know, and that's the kind of adventure you go, well, that's either crazy or, man, <laughs> exciting. Yeah. And, and but uh, I think a lot of Gen Z, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but a lot of them would say, well, that's that is crazy. That's too much. And and, and uh, they maybe need a little bit more preparation. And mm -hmm. so um, we and, and really, there's so many options uh, to better understand the playing field and the opportunities that are before them would be a good thing, too. So what we've done is to de not design launch you so that it's, it's only four months. And, but it's for younger people. So you could go, you know, between the ages of 18 to 21 and where you okay. would normally have gone to college. Uh, and a lot of people would say today, I don't want that. And I don't yep. want to be, you know, in a classroom taking notes. That sounds incredibly boring. Yeah. There's just a lot of reasons why, you know, college as an option is not, you know, I, I do want to get the preparation and I do want to get a degree. 
So we've created LaunchU to be able to address all of that. And it's, mm. while it's four months, you begin with a month here in America, you go for two months to Guatemala, and we have all kinds of exciting adventures there and experiential learning. And then you come back to America and debrief and you know, figure out what's next and how to apply it for another month. And you come away with uh, like a semester of, of classes that you've, and courses that you've gotten credit for. Um, you've also had the adventures and you've been in community and, and, uh, and now you see, hey, I could either go on in mission. There's a lot of different, uh, you know, we've got multiple mission bases around the, the world that you could go to. Uh, I could go uh, into a, more of a college track. I could combine them. I could go and get an apprenticeship. I could continue to get coaching to grow, but really to see the field, to say, okay, this is not about uh, just a one track thing, but I can, yeah. I can look at a variety of options that might fit me better and not go into debt. So <laughs> we do all yeah. of that for less than it would cost for them to stay in their parents' basement. <laughs> and, uh, that's a good thing. It so, is. It uh, is. It gets them out of the house experiences and the idea of potentially, you know, getting credits for school is, is nice, even though that may not be uh, important to a lot of people now. I mean, it yeah. is shifting. You're seeing a lot of people saying, you know, I don't need to go to college to, to make money. I don't need to co go to college to, you know, to, to have a career and whatever it is. And it's just a totally different, um, it's totally different. Right. You can, yeah. you, you know, it, we need skills and we need training and coaching. And, uh, and for some, it's like, I'd like all of that. I'd like to not be in debt. And I'd like the option of one day maybe continuing and finishing my college degree. And can you do all that, uh, you know, and, and give it to me by August 14th? The answer, <laughs> that's the, yeah. and our answer is yes. It actually, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and I think that sense of, uh, wow, that, you know, that's amazing is what initially got the world race going. Uh, young people mm -hmm. thought, wow, I can go around the world and I can have all these different cultural experiences and make a difference. And it yep. doesn't need to break my bank account. You yeah, know, and I, that's, that's the, the sense of wow that I hope that young people see when they see this opportunity. Yeah, and for them, it's almost like a discovery, you know, of themselves in that four month period of like, hey, let's, you know, discover what I want to do. Because I, you know, there's, I have, a lot of I work with you know youth through Fellowship of Christian Athletes and a lot of our leaders. We have about mm -hmm. fifteen leaders, and I would say about half of them they don't really know what they right. want. You know they they right. they maybe have gotten into a college and they're okay with that, but it doesn't seem like they're satisfied with that. If that makes sense, like they're like okay, yeah, yeah I got in, but I don't. They don't really feel like that's what they're supposed to do or want to do. So I think this may fit into a lot of uh, desires, and it give it and it gives them like immediate, like, Hey, yeah, you can do this and you can do it in four months, not a year. And that, that Gen Z is, will be good for them. <laughs> yeah. It, it, people just, they need experience without the downside of having too much commitment. So yeah. that's the, and I, I think if I'm a young person, I just, all these people in social media telling me what to do, I just want to know, you know, what are my assets? What am I good at? What can mm -hmm. I do? And, and how can I be helped? to achieve the, the dreams that I've got. So that's, that's our notion is that, you know, we, we can do better. We, as a yeah. society, we should be able to do much better for young people. Yeah, no, I agree. What, so I know you talked a little bit about the experiences that they'll have in Guatemala. Um, what is, what is, what is that? What does that look like? Well, every week ought to have adventure in it. So, and the, the good yeah. news about Guatemala is there's lots of opportunity for that. I, I have loved Guatemala ever since I went there as a 17 year old myself. And I remember mm. um, working just not even a mile away from Mayan ruins. And yeah, and we, you know, we'd, we'd work on this camp and then we could go over and, and see the Mayan ruins and, and then going from there to Lake Atitlan, which is just maybe one of the, the very prettiest places in the world. It's a lake that's surrounded by volcanoes and it's just yeah, spectac yeah. spectacular and you, you get to hike up a volcano and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there, there's just all this stuff that you get to do when you eventually you're, you're in Antigua, one of the oldest cities in North America. And to see the yeah. culture and to, um, and to go to the markets and to see the Indian culture there and yep. to be able to 
understand you know, where they've come from and, um, and the cultural artifacts. And uh, you know, I, there's so much to share that in two months, it's just not enough. And yeah, so we'll have yeah. that er- every, um, every, every week you've got that. But also, uh, we get to pour into mission and, and to, uh, there's, there's a lot of poverty. Uh, a lot yep. of people, for example, don't even have a stove in their homes. And so we mm. get to go in and help build a, a stove for them or in, in some other way economically to help them. And then to, to share our lives and to develop relationship and to recognize. I think when you see another person's world, uh, you, you, you get to maybe get better perspective on your own world and recognize how much you've got. So yeah. That's, um, yeah. No, that's, you know, that's it, really good. We've got a base and we're out of this, this base, uh, where, you know, we can really form community and mm. where we can continue to pour into the, the team. So, um, it's, it's uh, life transformative and, uh, something that when my grandkids are of age, I want to be able to give, give to them as well. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I went to Guatemala and that was amazing. Uh, we worked in a dump, dump ministry there and mm-hmm. got to, you know, re- see true, true poverty, you know, um, yeah. and see how fortunate we really are here in America. And, uh, and then Megan, uh, my wife, she did the, uh, she did CGA. So she was in Antigua and got to yeah. experience all that and all that. So that was, yeah, she really enjoyed that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Uh, Seth. So let, let's uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Seth Godin and, and that relationship and how that kind of launched maybe some of the entrepreneur part of who you are. Yeah, uh, I uh, the entrepreneurial thing began when I was young. So yeah, even, even growing up and then in before college, that, yeah, in college, I had a janitorial service and I, you know, I just have always had the notion that uh, we can start our own businesses and we can use them to achieve our, our dreams. So, yep. but, but, uh, Seth Godin is, is arguably, uh, the, the top marketing guru in the world. And if you mm. go in and Google him, you'll see all of his best sellers and you'll see the different, um, projects that he's embraced that have changed things. And, uh, recently I was a part of his project to produce a, car- a thing called the carbon almanac which uh, there's a lot of, I think, uh, controversy around uh, the reality of global warming and, uh, economic, yeah. you know, our, our, uh, the world is uh, getting worse. We need to do mm-hmm. something about it. And so what is the reality? And 300 of us came together to, to write that. And um, I th- I'm proud of the project. I thought it was great. Seth puts out a daily blog and has for just about two decades. And I just, wow. uh, it's wisdom. And, uh, I, I, I don't think he, he's necessarily a, a Christian. He does seem to be a man of faith. I don't, uh, I've never actually met him. Mm-hmm. I've just been mentored long distance by him. At one point I thought, you know, what can I ever do for, for Seth? That would be a blessing. And, um, I would notice that um, cause he's, he's a real bespoke person. He's a person that believes in authenticity, do your own work. And sometimes I get his blog and there'd be a grammatical error. So I thought, hmm. you know, maybe I could like help edit those things. Yeah and, yeah. and so I did, and I send him back, you know, my little edit and, and, uh, he'd say, Oh, thank you. And make the change. And so I've been doing that for years now. And, wow. uh, and that's my little, <laughs> my little contribution to his life to, just try and, uh, you know, be a blessing for the ways that he's blessed me. Uh, mm. Just an, an amazing man that uh, if, if you're ever lucky to identify somebody who is both wise and practical as yeah. he is, you know, I, I think you you want to follow them and learn from their life. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's and that's pretty amazing that you were, you know, you consider him someone that you've learned from and kind of stood on his his shoulders or, you know, his ceiling as your floor. Yeah. in a sense, but you've never actually met him. So I think there's right. a lot of 
to be said for people who have written books that you can go learn from. A lot of people feel like, oh, I, don't have, I don't have a mentor. I don't have, you know, there's audio, there's books, there's, you know, all these people that you can go learn from that are at our fingertips. And it's, you know, you can go on YouTube and there's so much free information out there. And so um, there's really, in my opinion, no excuse that from right. to not to not learn and to not always be a student and to not you know have somebody you can really stand on their their ceiling there's there's so many people that if you'll chase them as i did andrew you know yeah they'll they'll acknowledge your perseverance and will uh, allow you some measure of access and with mm. that access who knows where it could go yeah but, um, yeah I've, I've seen that to be the case and um and tried not to be shy about um, you know going after people who had something that I felt would be helpful in my dream. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Um, no, we talked a little bit about you know one of the what what's one thing that if you could teach somebody, what would be that one thing that you would really want to want to teach them? Yeah, yeah. I think first of all, resilience comes to mind. Mm -hmm. But then I think, well, how do we get resilience? That's almost like a secondary effect. And yeah. um, I like the, the Bible verse, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Why? Because Paul is writing to Timothy, and he says to Timothy, the things that you've learned from me uh, impart to those who are responsible and mm. ask them to impart to others and so there, you've got four levels. You've got Paul, who's now an old man. You've got Timothy, who's a spiritual son. And yeah. the interesting connection for me is between Timothy and the assignment that he's been given to find responsible people. Reliable mm. is, is another word that you... So um, I think just learning to be reliable takes a lot of grit and a lot of commitment. Yeah. And it's not something that I typically see in young people. Typically, there's so much optionality, so much FOMO that uh, they're, you know, they, they'll try something and then they're out. But the mm. best stuff I've ever done has come through a lot of failure. And uh, yeah. I, I fail, I get back up, my knees are bloody, I keep on going. And, mm. uh, it, you know, this, this launch you is a good example. I've, I've been failing for about six years to get something that combines mission with academics and, yeah. uh, and preparation. And maybe this launch you is it, I don't know, but I don't give up. And so yeah. I'm, I wanna be, I wanna show up as reliable and responsible. And if I can do that, then I get resilience. And so I, I'd mm. love to help impart that to young people who uh, wonder if they'll ever reach their dreams because it, it does take a lot of perseverance in, in, in responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. I mean, the, the combination of responsibility and resilience and, you know, I think people's biggest mistake, well, some people, I think the most dangerous place someone can be is, is taking action, right? You got to take massive action yeah. so that you actually fail and that you actually learn along the way. And, and obviously the key is learning. You want to just keep failing. But if you keep failing and even, you know, I heard this, you know, I don't know how long I heard this, but if you, even a broken clock is right twice a day, right? Right. So it's, it's, you know, it comes around and it's still, it's still right twice a day. So I think the way that you eliminate some of those, uh, you know, failures is learning from other people who have gone before you, which you've done, but also at the same time, like, there's no, there's no better way to build that resilience and to build something from just going and doing it and taking action and massive action to go and learn it and, and fail. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I think failure has been a huge part of why I've had success, you know, in, right. in business and just life in general. Um, it's, but you're right. How do we, how do we teach that to kind of the next generation um, that, doesn't want to be exposed to, I guess, some of the failures in some ways. Um, it's, it's inevitable. You've got to, and first of all, as, as um, older people, we need to trust more. We need to let mm. young people have the opportunity to make those errors, which eventually they're going to succeed. You know, yeah. Trust them with uh, the, this could fail. Yeah, it, it may very well fail, and that's okay. You know, mm. Instead of thinking, oh, it has to work. So yeah. I, 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 uh, 
I say to, to parents oftentimes when they talk to me about, you know, why should my child do this? I'm like, you know, I, the reason your child should do this is that you didn't trust them with enough pain. They, they need pain to grow up and mm. it's going to be hard and they're going to, you know, if they've had enough iterative experience, then they're going to start to recognize the amount of failure that it takes to get to a success instead of you intervening and trying to prop them up. Yeah, and rescue them every time they fall. Yeah, right. No, that's good. That's good. That's hard to hear as a parent, but also really good, you know, because I think it's true, right? Um, and that's that's important. So that's that's amazing. So I, I love that you you have really taken on that resilience, but that um, I guess the responsibility piece. How would you really um, teach the responsibility piece? Is it just by giving them the responsibility yeah, you and know, fail so with when, it and right. figure it out? Or? Let's, let's look at what we'll do with Lon Shu. So they'll come here, and we don't just begin training them uh, and assuming that they're blank slates. I want to know what their assets are. I want to do an inventory of all the things in their lives that are uh, going to help them and, and hmm. better understand what their dreams are. And once we understand all that, then we can begin to – to ask the question, well, what do you need in order to be successful? And, and then to customize their learning experience to that. And so, you know, um, and, and, and then to recognize that it's probably not going to come through classroom learning, but it's going to come through experiential education. Yeah. So yeah. oftentimes you get people that are, are saying, you know, I, I, the injustice of the sex trade is something. Well, man, I've, I've been after that for gosh, uh, you know, multiple decades. And um, the good news is that there are people that are making a difference. And if we, somebody says that, and if they're serious and really do want to make a difference and are committed, then I'll introduce them to somebody like um, uh, uh, Kenny with Wipe Every Tear. And, mm -hmm. and yeah. Kenny is, um, you know, been after this, especially in the Philippines, and he is making a difference. So go mm. and, and apprentice with him, and that's how you're going to learn, not necessarily by just reading a book. Mm. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. I, I love that because I think there's so many people who miss it in just in general, right, as far as they, they want to offer their services or their product or whatever it is, and they just offer it without actually seeing what that person's needs are or what their skills are. And you're going to be, like you said, taking inventory of their assets saying, hey, this is what you're really good at. And this is where you have potential to grow in. And this is your desires. And this is your dreams. All yeah. right, let's figure out how to plug you in. Let's put you on a track that's going to actually get you there versus like, hey, everybody's cookie cutter. And this is what you need. Right. To do. Yeah. And then to, to pair them up with a coach. You know, hmm. One of the great things about young people that I've found is that they recognize the importance of coaching and therapy and counseling. And, yeah. uh, you know, all my kids do that. And my wife is a therapist um, and, and coaching makes such a difference. It brings another person's perspective, their encouragement. It's really what discipleship is supposed to be. A, a good, mm. a good discipler is a coach who will come along and, and uh, take the, the dreams of a person and, and pick them up when they fall down and then, you know, brainstorm with them. Well, what, what would work? And yeah. I, I think young people need that. I think they're hungry for that. And I, I'm good at bringing coaches alongside young people uh, and having intergenerational ministry that is a delight to both parties. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's key. And that was a big key for us on our race was having, you know, um, coaches and having, you know, Gary McGinnis and his wife and Joey yeah. and, um, yeah, and having the team leaders and all those things. So I, I think having that structured in there is, is key. Um, so yeah, you're, you're right on with that. Um, Seth, what was, you know, what's been some of the, I know you've said you failed a lot to learn, but what was, what's been some of the biggest failures you feel like in your life that you've been able to learn from? I, um, uh, I, you know, I said your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness. And I, I do tend to act quickly. It's, ironic that I wrote a book on listening prayer. That's not my typical posture. You know, in yeah. listening prayer, you're, you're going to sit in silence. And I, but sometimes I, I can act too quickly and I can be um, abrasive. And 
Um, I remember back in 1989 when I was working with a friend and uh, we started another ministry together and it was growing like crazy, but um, it was making him crazy. It was growing too fast. And mm. so basically he, he um, fired me. Here's one of my best friends. And, <laughs> um, and I, you know, Karen is pregnant with our fifth and wow. uh, I don't have a, a source of income. And I just felt like a fool, uh, and I had opportunity. I, um, you know, I could have gone off and made a bunch of money, and I was kicking myself that I trusted this guy and so forth. And do you know, it, it was out of that that I started Adventures and Missions. But I did so almost begrudgingly, like, oh, this is something yeah. I, I, I thought God wanted me to do. I'll do it as an extra, but I'm also going to start other things as well. And I started like four other things. And, but eventually <laughs> Adventures and Missions was the thing I was called to do. It wasn't till I don't know, maybe 15 years later, I'm mowing the lawn and God speaks to me as I'm mowing the lawn and says, you know that thing that your friend uh, fired you? And I'm, yeah. And he says, well, that was me. Um, because mm. your time with him was not about uh, you know, you failing, that was your internship. Like if you hadn't done that, mm -hmm. you couldn't have started Adventures and Missions. Yeah, and it hit, hit my spirit and I'm like, oh my gosh, if I'd only had that perspective, I began to cry as I'm mowing the lawn. <laughs> I'm, just, <laughs> I'm having a moment, you know, and, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, I, I need to see more of the failures in my life that way, that through the lens of it's an internship, it's a time of learning and preparation for the next season. Hmm. Hmm. No, that's good. That's good. So do you feel like that was kind of, you know, even the case with some of the world race stuff and now going into launch oh, yeah. you, that was almost oh, like for sure. the same I, type of thing. So many things I've, I've repented. I remember once we had a thing called an awakening here and, uh, and I was going to speak and introduce it to the, the crowd. And I said, God, what should we, you know, talk to them about? And he said, repentance. And I said, Oh, that's great. So what, you know, what, should I do? And he said, well, you should begin by repenting. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it's another thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. And so I had an opportunity to, you know, stand up in front and, and to own some of the things that I had done that were mistakes where we had maybe grown too fast and trusted people too quickly. And mm -hmm. um, if we'd just gone at the speed of relationship instead of the speed of a, interest, and there's a lot of people that were interested. It was sexy. It was fascinating that you can go around the world and have all these experiences but a lot of those folks that applied were not ready and yeah and they were um, so deeply broken inside that they just didn't get all that they could have gotten out of it so I, I did need to repent and yeah there's there's a lot that I've learned and I'm, I'm committed that this next go and this next effort that we have that we not go any faster in the speed of relationship and um hmm. and people proving themselves to be reliable hmm. so that's yeah. a no. that's a thing that's really good and that's good for me to hear too because i'm so much of a hey let's go and and go as fast as you can and and figure it out and megan's always like like pulling back saying hey let's like consider consider the cost of this like what does this actually look like and, it's a good marriage and that's that's yeah, a good marriage. It really is. <laughs> it's sometimes true of, uh, at least in, it's certainly true in my marriage that uh, my wife has gone with me around the world and and is uh, tired of all the travel and all the, you know, the different countries that mm -hmm. we've been to and is ready to just kind of park it and focus on the grandchildren for a while. But I'm yeah. I'm still, oh my goodness, there's so much need in the world. Let's go, you know. And Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and figuring out like what that looks like. Um, it's a good yeah, marriage. It's, it's good. It's it really is. It's a beautiful thing because we push them and they they push us and in different ways and it's it's all really good. Um, that's awesome. So uh, you know, tell me, you know, Seth, I know your um, you know fitness is is important to you. When before we got on, you were even walking on the treadmill and you said. What was it you said? You said you, in the last, in your time, you've walked around the world or what was it? Yeah, it's like uh, the world is maybe 25,000 miles in circumference. And I, I probably walked 30,000 in the wow. last uh, 10 years or so. But that's just kind of what I do when I'm working. Yeah. Uh, and and oh, I, um, 
in, in my spare time, one of the things I've done is to research and, and find one of the most, um, uh, uh, the top researching ph physicians in the country who has discovered that visceral fat is actually a different kind of fat than subcutaneous fat, that it produces inflammation and degrades the health and produces chronic disease. And so I've mm. been working with him to try and uh, create a business that would help uh, foment a revolution in the way we take care of ourselves and be more proactive and less reactive. And uh, yeah. that's, that's just fun. And, um, you know, we, I, I want to, I want to help him create a billion dollar business. And mm. uh, he's, he's a man that is, he's, he served as a doctor to, to presidents and secretaries of state. And, wow. uh, and he's, he's, uh, uh, he's helped me. I, uh, work out every, every day and, uh, yep. and try and keep my body in shape. And I believe that we can live well past a hundred years if we take yeah. care of ourselves. No, that's good. That's awesome. So, it, so you have like a working desk and it's just a treadmill and you walk and <laughs> yes. work at the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. and a half miles that's... an hour to three miles an hour is about enough. Okay. Awesome. Do you feel like yourself is more energized or tired by the end of the day or is it more just your oh, no, brain I, is able I'm, to be more creative yeah i think you know gosh if we're talking about health uh you, you gotta obviously you eat well um yeah that means uh not processed foods not sugar and yep. uh it not, certainly not a lot of the processed carbs that you you get mm -hmm. and um probably more meat uh, especially yeah. like if you go and get an mri and see that you got the visceral fat around your your heart, then you, you need to get rid of that. And that's going to happen through more of a paleo diet. Mm. And, um, you know, there's hormetics, there's sauna, there's cold water bathing. There's, yep. there's just all this stuff that you can do if you're interested in, in sticking around for the long haul. Yeah. Which, yeah. There's a lot to do. I mean, I, I looked at all the, I just learned that in Pakistan, for example, that, um, there are 4 million Christians who are slaves of Muslims. The Muslims wow. own these, they own these brick factories and their workers are these, um, these Christian workers that are indebted. That's how they keep them there. And so the families will be there for generations. And wow. um, I'm like, that needs to change. That's, that's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and, and it's only because I've been relatively ignorant. I mean, I've, I've helped buy the freedom of some kids before, but I, it needs to be a movement and it's, it's wrong. Mm. It exists also in India on a bigger scale and a different religion. So, you know, it, it, there's just a lot of that kind of thing that represents an opportunity. And in Swaziland where we're feeding 7,000 orphans daily or vulnerable children and orphans, you know, those kids need education and they need love and they need opportunity. And, and we've been at that for 17 years now and mm. are creating a, a leadership center uh, in the middle of the country. And, you know, there's, there's just cool projects around the world that you can be a part of if you're willing to kind of do the work uh, so that yeah. you're not the issue, that, that identity is taken care of and your family's in a good shape and you've got community. And now you can reach out to the rest of the world that is much, much needier than you are. And yeah. Yeah. you can be God's feet and hands on the planet. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really powerful. And it, you, obviously, you know, you have the heartbeat of God and it's it's a powerful thing. And it, But it starts with what you're saying is like you taking care of yourself. Like you want to live over 100 years because you know that there's so much that needs to be done in this world. Um, but it really does start by, like you said, taking care of yourself and community and having that family. And then from there, being able to have that ripple effect. Um, it's like almost like the revival starts like within your own house. And then from Absolutely. there it starts to go out. Um, so that's, yeah, that's amazing. And I love what you're saying about, you know, all the health stuff, you know, I love to work out and we've been jumping in the river Monday, Wednesday, Friday, oh, good for you. Know, you. 7 a.m. Well, it's yeah. cold water there in oh, Colorado. It's, it's cold. My it's, cold. Goodness. It was, it's snowing right now, actually on spring yeah, break. So that's a, that's a beautiful 26 degrees on Monday. <laughs> that's the a, water, that's I don't a, know how cold the water was, but outside. Yeah. It's so, so, but that's so good for you. The, the, oh, it's the, amazing. The proteins that you develop when you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. We just started this thing called F3 here. So it's faith fellowship and, and, um, right. fitness. Right. And I've so they're, they're kind of all over 
and it's just a free mm -hmm. community for for men because we mm -hmm. men don't have that and so it's been really cool just to see every we've done it i think we're on our fourth time we're doing it monday wednesday friday eventually we want to go five days a week but we have yeah. someone new every time we're adding every day just one person at a time right now but right. that person has an amazing experience of getting a workout in a sweat jumping in the cold water and afterwards they just feel like so alive and so um, and we pray for people and it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. So it's kind of cool to see um, that little thing happening right here. So, but yeah, yeah I, I agree great. the the fitness um, side of things is, is important, is really important. Yeah. So um, awesome, Seth. Well, I, I've really enjoyed our, our time. Is there anything um, that I didn't ask you that you, that you feel like you want to share? Uh, I, I, I'm looking for help. Uh, mm. If people want to reach out to young people. I look at the anxiety in mm. a lot of young people. And, uh, you know, this doctor I was telling you about, his neighbor, uh, their 18-year-old hung herself the other day. He yeah. Rushed, they, they got him. He rushed over, had to cut her down, and um, she ended up being mm. brain dead. And, you know, and that there's a suicide epidemic. Well, what are the answers? What's the church doing to fight that? Yeah. Right? I think that we need to embrace that as a challenge. And I think that there's, we can do better. Uh, and, and life should be amazing. And young people deserve more. And if, you know, you want to fight for, for young people and, and help them to live the lives that God intended them to live, uh, I'd love to, to have the help because um, I think that there's going to be a change. And this may be the generation that begins to really turn things around um, as our society has been going downhill for a while. And uh, yeah. some people call this next generation the hero generation. They're just looking for a mm. cause that's important enough. And I, I, I'd, I'd love to about. help them be that, you know, not, not in a false way, but to embrace the causes that are, that are so much greater than their own and to, mm. to fight with resilience over time to come alongside the widow and the orphan and to bring the hope that they deserve. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Awesome, Seth. What? So, how can somebody get a hold of you if they're listening to this right now and they yeah. they want to they feel a call or a tugging or just uh, just want to know more? Um, how would they get a hold of you? You can go to the organization's uh, website, adventures dot org, and you could you could hit contact there, and uh, or you could go to my website, sethbarnes dot com, and uh, you could contact me through that, um, or um, Email me, Seth Barnes at adventures.org. And okay. uh, I'd, I'd be happy to, I try to be accessible. And, uh, you know, I, I think the way that we fight a lot of the indignity and, and lack of uh, humanity and authenticity is to show up as a human being, as a authentic person, to be vulnerable. Yeah. It's, it's counterintuitive, but if we look at Jesus and how he fought, he fought with vulnerability. And so yeah. I... It hurts, yeah. but it, I, I love to um, connect periodically with people that are sincere and, and do want to um, live a life that emulates Jesus's life. Hmm. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Yeah. And you're right. The the mental health crisis in this world is devastating. You know, like I was reading on some statistics and it's like every every hour, 10 people take their life. And by the end of the day, six of yeah. those people are kids. So it's just like. Yeah. Or it's, yeah, it's six, every hour, six people take their life. And by the end of the day, 10 of those people are kids. And it's just like so sad that, and, and it's a high, high level here as well. So as people, you know, taking their lives and the, you know, the pill industry is a billion dollar industry and people just push pills on people. And there's some real healing, you know, inner healing that is available out there for people. And, and really like Jesus is the answer. And I love that you want to cultivate, um, you know, people who have that desire to change lives. So, um, yeah. So if you, if you're listening to this and, you know, reach out to Seth, go to sethbarns.com and, uh, reach out to him or Seth at adventures and missions.com, uh, to reach out to him and, uh, tell him, tell him what's on your heart and tell him, you know, Hey, I heard your message and love to figure out how I can be a part of, you know, what you're doing or whatever it is. Right. So, um, yeah. well, I really appreciate the time, Seth. Uh, you know, is there, and uh yeah i just really appreciate the time and it was an honor to just be able to talk it was good it's good to talk to you kyle you're you're doing well and uh, keep 